When all electrons are in the lowest possible energy state, an atom is in the ground state. For example, a helium atom that has the electron configuration 1s2. Both electrons in that atom are in the lowest possible energy level in the 1s orbital. So we could represent this visually by showing the nucleus of a helium atom and then I'm trying to show both electrons in the 1s energy level. If the right amount of energy is absorbed by an electron it can jump to a higher energy level. This is an unstable momentary condition called the excited state. So we'll try to show that here. We're going to put some energy into this atom in the form of heat, light, electrical energy, something. And watch what happens when an electron absorbs that energy. Boop. It jumps up to a higher energy level possibly into the 2s orbital. Now it could jump up higher. It could jump up to the 2p orbital or the 4s orbital or something. I'm just making an example here. In any case, if the right amount of energy is absorbed, the electron, one of the electrons or both, could jump to higher energy levels. Atoms have the least energy when their electrons are in the lowest energy levels. Therefore, the spot vacated by the jumped up electron causes electrons to fall from upper levels. To fall, an electron must lose the right amount of energy and the atom emits that energy as light. So from the previous slide, we had a helium atom that had an electron that had jumped up from the first energy level to the second. That leaves a space in the first energy level and the atom is energetically less stable when there's a space in the lower energy level. So this electron is going to fall back down and when it does it emits that energy that it released as light. Any old value of energy to be absorbed or released is not okay. This explains the lines of color in an emission spectrum. So a given atom always has a fingerprint of distinct lines and you can see that not any wavelength can be emitted. There are only certain ones for certain atoms. Let's talk briefly about wavelengths. Red wavelengths are longer, blue wavelengths are shorter, red wavelengths are said to have a low frequency. We can think of frequency as the number of wiggles per second. So if we had a rope and we were wiggling it up and down on one end and we were trying to make it look like this red wavelength, we would have to wiggle it up and down at a certain rate. But what about the blue wavelength on the right? Wouldn't we have to shake that rope up and down more times per second to make it look like this blue wavelength? That's why we say that the blue wavelength has a higher frequency. And in shaking this blue rope up and down more times per second, there's more energy that we have to put into it uh, to make it look like that. Therefore, blue wavelengths have a larger amount of energy than red wavelengths. Let's review. When atoms absorb energy, electrons jump up to higher energy levels. The more energy absorbed, the larger the leap. Because atoms are, energetically, most stable when electrons are in the lowest possible energy levels, the spot vacated by the electron that jumped up results in a net reshuffling of electrons in the downward direction. The energy released by any falling down electron is light, which is then emitted by the atom. Two not any old value of energy is absorbed or released. Higher energy light, like blue, has short wavelengths and high frequencies. Such light is related to large energy transitions, either up or down. Lower energy light, like red, has long wavelengths and low frequencies and is related to smaller energy transitions.